Good morning, boys and girls. I hope you have fun with today's lesson. Today's lesson is going to elaborate a little bit more on who George Washington was. George Washington, not as the first president and the commander in chief, but who he was as a person and the character of George Washington. He's an interesting character and he was very respected. It was even said that at one point in, a, in the middle of battle that he looked so regal and so stoic and so wise that the person in the one of the redcoats, part of the king's army, didn't want to shoot at him because they, he was so respected. and He rode out on his horse tall and proud. So he's a fun character, a fun person to learn about. Remember boys and girls, these are real people who pledge their lives and their sacred fortunes and their honor for what we have today and what the freedoms that we get to enjoy today. So it's good to know about them. It's good to dig deeper. So I hope you enjoy today's story. Today's story comes out of our book, The Children's Book of Virtue. This is one of our, one of our favorite go-to books in the classroom, Moms and Dad. And I would just wanna do a real quick reminder of the table of contents. Remember boys and girls, when you use a table of contents, it's it's where the stories are listed. So we would run our finger down until we find the story of George Washington. And it's down here, George Washington and the Little Tree on page 84. So that tells me to turn to page 84. George Washington and the Cherry Tree. Here is the most famous American story about telling the truth. We should all be like young George when George Washington was a little boy, he lived on a farm in Virginia. His father taught him to ride, and he used to take young George about the farm with him so that his son might learn how to take care of the fields and horses and cattle when he grew older. Mr. Washington had planted an orchard of fine fruit trees. There were apple trees, peach trees, pear trees, plum trees, and cherry trees. Once a a particularly fine cherry tree was sent to him from across the ocean. Mr. Washington planted it on the edge of the orchard. He told everyone on the farm to watch it carefully to see that it was not broken or hurt in any way. It grew well and one spring it was covered with white blossoms. Mr. Washington was pleased to think he would soon have cherries from that little tree. Just about this time, George was given a shiny new hatchet. George took it and went about chopping sticks, hacking into the rails of fences, and cutting whatever else he passed. At last, he came to the edge of the orchard, and thinking only of how well his hatchet could cut, he chopped into the little cherry tree. The bark was soft, and it cut so easily that George chopped the tree right down and then went on to his play. That evening, when Mr. Washington came in from inspecting the farm, he sent his horse to the stable and walked down to the orchard to look at his cherry tree. He stood in amazement when he saw how it was cut. Who would have dared to do such a thing? He asked everyone, but no one could tell him anything about it. Just then, George passed. George, his father called in an angry voice, actually. Do you know who killed my cherry tree? This was a tough question, and George staggered under it for a moment, but then he quickly recovered. I, I cannot tell a lie, Father, he said. I did it with my own hatchet. Mr. Washington looked at George. The boy's face was white, but he looked straight into his father's eyes and told the truth. Go into the house, son, said Mr. Washington sternly. George went into the library and waited for his father, he was very unhappy and very much ashamed. He knew he had been foolish and thoughtless and that his father was right to be displeased. Soon, Mr. Washington came into the room. Come here, my boy, he said. George went over to his father. Mr. Washington looked at him long and steadily. Tell me, my son, why did you cut the tree? I, I was playing it and, and I did not think, George stammered. And now the tree will die. We shall never have any cherries from it. But worse than that, you have failed to take care of the tree when I asked you to do so. George's head was bent and his cheeks were red from shame. I'm sorry, father, he said. Mr. Washington put his hand on the boy's shoulder. Look at me, he said. I'm sorry to have lost my cherry tree. 
but I'm glad that you were brave enough to tell me the truth. I would rather have you truthful and brave than to have a whole orchard full of the finest cherry trees. Never forget that, my son. George Washington, ne George Washington never did forget. To the end of his day, to the end of his life, he was just as brave and honorable, honorable as he was that day as a little boy. So, boys and girls, we can learn a lot from Washington. I, there, I have a couple books. This was a little bit is a little bit longer of a story, but here's one: Moms and Dads, George Washington. Uh, you can find that on Amazon. There's lots of fun books. There's also some of the Magic Tree Heart House books. There's a fact checker for the American Revolution if you want to dig deeper. This these next couple of weeks. Have fun with the learning. Find out about Washington and all you can. I have another read aloud that I'm going to try to do called George Washington's Breakfast. I hope you enjoyed that story, boys and girls. Have fun. Be honest. Tell the truth. Remember, when you get in trouble, when you lie, actually, we've talked about this in the classroom. If you don't tell the truth, you can actually make it worse, right? So be honest. Follow the example of George Washington. Have a good day.